So in part two of this series, Diane takes us through the parable of the sower and the seeds. And we look at how it is that the gospel of Jesus Christ can take root in our lives and in our heart on a regular basis. And so I, I have loved this message. Diane, thank you so much for, for teaching this. And I uh, just want to have a little bit of a conversation around your sermon. I, I think there's so much uh, to be found in there. And one of the things that you emphasized was the heart's condition and how it impacts our understanding understanding of the gospel. So can you provide some more concrete ways in which we can really evaluate the condition of our hearts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a really good indicator for us is to see what we're triggered by. Mm. Um, I think a lot of times we misinterpret being a Christian with having this joy and, you know, we're, we're cool and collected, but mm. we're just as triggered as anyone else. We're, you know, in this world, we have pains and different issues that we're facing every day. Mm. Um, I was just aware of that this week, and I was looking at the condition of my heart because I was in a situation where I was immediately triggered, and mm. I had this visceral reaction to this situation. Mm. Um, and then when you see that you're triggered, what is your response mm. to that trigger? So is your response something that is loving, or is it rooted in something else? And so... Um, I think if we're paying attention, we can see a pattern of behavior in our lives and we can see a pattern of responses. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, looking at those two things, what are we triggered by and how do we respond to those situations? Yeah, and it's interesting because I think when you look in the Bible, we don't often see that Jesus has a lot of the extreme responses Mm -hmm. that we often see on either side of any scale. And so it's always harder to feel like you have to live in the middle of that space and, and find the the more gospel-centered response yeah. because it isn't often found on mm-hmm. the extremes of these different sides. Yeah. And, and you also said that you, you stated the, the lack of curiosity. I love that. The lack of curiosity and, and the thirst for certainty Mm. can be detrimental to our faith. Mm. Um, So how can we foster a a sense of curiosity about our faith without feeling like we're like questioning God or or doubting God? Because I mean, as Christians, we we find God to be our foundation, but Mm -hmm. we can go through life and, Mm -hmm. and feel like, I don't necessarily understand, Lord, why I'm going through this, or I don't understand this passage and why this is there and and things like that. So how do we how do we do that? Yeah. Well, I think it's good to look at how this all started. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if we look at the origin story of our faith, Mm -hmm. we see Eve and Mm -hmm. Adam, they're in a garden. And what is something that happens in that garden? They're curious. Mm -hmm. They're curious about the fruit. They're questioning God's authority because he literally told them, hey, don't eat this. But what's interesting about that is that curiosity and questioning were a part of their design before sin came into the picture. Mm. So I think a lot of times we've been taught that if you're curious, if you question, that's sinful, but that wasn't the case in the garden. Mm. Um, We did a really good teaching series on this, um, I think in January, in Mm. deconstruction, and hopefully we can put that in the comments or make that available for us because... Mm. I think that that series really walks us through the beauty of asking questions Mm. and how that actually can reconstruct our faith in a really powerful way. Mm. Um, And then questions can lead to demolition as well. Mm. Um, But I don't think that we should be afraid of questions. And if we are certain about God, then Mm. I'm not sure if he's a God worth worshiping. Mm. Um, He is infinite. He created all things. So if we can understand him in every aspect of our theology, then Mm -hmm. we probably uh, need to be a little bit more curious. Yeah. And a lot of these stories that Jesus talked about, the parables and the teachings, it came out of somebody asking a question. Yeah. Um, And I mean, even the Pharisees and things like that, these were people who were supposed to be sure of their faith. Yeah. And yet these were the people that Jesus had to teach often about empathy, about love, about what it looks like to walk in that. Right. And what's interesting about the difference between the Pharisees' questions Mm. where they were accusations, right? Mm. They were questions, you know, wrapped in an accusation. They thought that they knew the answer. So the question wasn't rooted in humility. And so I think as we approach God, as we approach people, as we approach our faith, it is so important that the question is humble. We're going to be willing to listen to the answer. Oh, that's so good. And, And it leads us to just the last question of, you know, what are 
practical steps? What would you recommend anyone who realizes that as they evaluate themselves, they kind of fall into the first three categories of mm. that soil, the, the bad soil? Mm. Um, and how can they improve the spiritual condition of their hearts so that we look and walk like Jesus, because this is everyone. It's yeah. not just you know the person who's sitting in the congregation or the person sitting and watching right now. It's it's us as pastors. Mm-hmm. It's those out on the mission field. It's anyone who who tries to live like Jesus. How do we make sure that we are checking in and evaluating the condition of our hearts? Um, there's so many ways I could answer this, <laughs> but I think for me. Um, I'll just speak from my experience. I, I think that something that's been really helpful is to watch what we're being influenced by. Mm. Um, I think it's really easy to get into an echo chamber where our algorithm mm. on Twitter, on TikTok, on even Facebook, and uh, what's on in the background of our house, what news is constantly being broadcasted to us, and mm. are those things primarily influencing us? Mm. And a lot of times they are. We have a lot of noise in our world. We have a lot of people vying for our loyalty. Um, And so it's really hard to make space for Jesus in those moments Mm -hmm. if it's being crowded out by all the influence around us. So Mm -hmm. can you turn off your social media for extended periods of time? Can you turn off the news for extended periods of time? Of course, it's great to be informed, Mm -hmm. but we need to be informed through the Holy Spirit, right? We need to be informed through scripture. We need to be informed Mm -hmm. through spending time with God through rest. Um, through uh, reading the word, through worship, through enjoying life, through being with people, Mm -hmm. um, through acts of service. And so it's, I don't know, I think that those two things have been really helpful for me in this season. Mm, That's so good. And this is just the start of a conversation. And as we are going through this series, I encourage you to also engage in these conversations with those around you. And I know it's so easy, anytime we ask people to evaluate themselves. It's really easy to heap guilt and shame on ourselves as we look through and we might find that we might fall into the bad soil. But you see, guilt and shame are not going to be lasting uh, solutions. Instead, when we look at ourselves and we evaluate ourselves, we need to look at ourselves with the same grace that Jesus gave us. And we need to evaluate honestly. And then we work towards the heart of Jesus. We work towards loving each other well. And instead of getting defensive with ourselves and with others, let's evaluate ourselves and ask the question, what soil do I fall into? And what changes can I make in my life so that I can look and walk like Jesus? Thank you guys for watching.